Amen. Please stand with me. Turn to Revelations chapter 12, if you will do so. Revelations chapter 12 and verse 15. Revelations chapter 12, verse 15. You know, I believe with all my heart the coming of the Lord is now. I believe that it's even at the door. In Revelations chapter 12, verse 15, if you found that, say amen. amen. Said in the serpent cast out of his mouth water as a flood after the woman, that he might cause her to be carried away of the flood. And the earth helped the woman, and the earth opened her mouth and swallowed up the flood, which the dragon cast out of his mouth. The dragon was wrought with the woman and went to make war with the remnant of her seed, which keep the commandment of God and hath the testimony of Jesus Christ. For a few minutes tonight, by the help of God, I want to preach on with the city in sight. Let us ask the will of God to be done. Father, stand before you again. I'm helpless. God, I need help and I need strength. I need the anointing of the Holy Ghost in me, O oh God. I pray the blind go to seeing and the deaf go to hearing in this place tonight. Lord, to cast out every devil, bind every evil spirit, claim the victory through the blood, claim the liberty through the presence of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. And everybody said... Amen. Shake somebody's hand. Tell them I do want to hear what God's got to say tonight. Amen. Praise God. Do want to hear what God has to say tonight. I, I want to, before I get into this message, though, it's, I, I want to tell, this, tell you that dream that I had again last Saturday night. It was a week ago. Some of you was here Wednesday night. And you heard me tell the story, tell about the dream, and you know, and I have lived it and relived it. And uh, Precious, you know, she's thought about it, and we've discussed it several times. But I, I want to just bring this in and some things there. I feel like the Lord has showed me more so about the dream. You know, Precious and I, I don't know how we got where we was at, but we come to the foot of a bridge. And the bridge was higher than what you can imagine will ever be. It would, it, would over, it would go over any city that I've ever seen. It's higher than New York City or any city, but it was a long bridge. And uh, as it went upward, you know, and it went over, that bridge is the part of the, where the road was, uh, was already broken out in huge places. All that was left was a little sidewalk on the side with a handrail. And part of the rail was gone, but right on the top, the majority of that handrail was broken off, and I could see it hanging down. And I told Precious, I said, Precious, we got to go to the other side. It wasn't a river, but it was a deep, wide gulf that this bridge expanded. There was no bottom to it, it looked like, and she looked and told me, she said, dear, she said, I'll never make it. I said, yes, you will. So I took a blindfold, and I blindfolded her, put it around her face, and, and I told her, I said, now you just pay attention, will you? She said, I will. I said, we've got to make it above everything. We've got to make it. So I took her by her arms. I had a stick like a rod in my hand also. Don't know where that came from. But I took her by her hands. I said, step up on the walk. She stepped up on the little walkway, and we began to walk up that long, long incline. The bottom of the middle of, the middle of that road was tore out. And as we went along, she said, Dear, please let me take this blindfold off. I said, No, you promised. Now you got to keep the blindfold on. And as we went on, and then we come to places. There was no handrail there at all. 
I took that stick, that rod, I stuck it out beside her. I said, take hold of that rod. Hold on to it. She held on. I said, just keep putting one foot in front of the other. As I looked around, I looked over the side of that thing, just that little path that we was on. My legs began to hurt me so bad. It was like I was trying to hold on with my feet. I was holding on with her. And I said, precious, I said, one foot in the front of the other. One foot in front of the other foot. Just keep on going. She said, I need to rest. We'd stop like almost in midair. The only thing, that little walkway. She said, please let me take the blindfold off. I said, no, baby, you can't do that. You got to keep it on. I knew she'd never make it. And we just kept on. We come to a place where there was some railing. And I said, you can rest. Put your hand on that rail. She stood there. We rested a few minutes. I said, we got to go on. Stuck that rod back out. She put her hand on it, uh, and we walked on. We got to the t almost to the top uh, of that uh, span, and it was so high. And it seems like you know, just looking across out there, it was above everything, and there was no handrail, no nothing for a long, long way. All the center of that road was already gone. I stuck that rod out. I said, "Precious, we got to go on." She grabbed the hold. I said, "Hold on tight, baby." And she held on to that, and we walked along. We'd stop every few minutes, and she would say, please let me take it off. I said, no, can't do it. And we just kept on. We made it over the top, started down. It looked like it was just miles and miles. I thought, will we ever get to the other side of this thing? My legs was hurting me so bad. I was in such a strain. Never have I ever dreamed anything that caught, had me in such stress as I was. Finally, we got down to where the other side was. And as we walked off of that bridge, there's a horse and a carriage sitting right there. I said, Precious, there's a horse and a carriage here. I said, Come here. And I led her over there. I said, Put your hand here. She got a hold of that handrail. I put her hand in the other one. I said, Step up. I showed her where it was, got a hold of her foot. Put it on the little step up. And she stepped up. I said, there's a seat. Turn around. Sit down. She sat down. Can I take the blindfold off? I said, no, leave it on. And I stepped up and I stepped across her. Sit down. The reins from that horse was hanging over that footboard. Soon as I reached down, picked them up, that horse began to move. And he began to run. And I was holding on to them reins. And I was whipping that horse up. And he was stretched out. He was going right, wide open all of a sudden something told me to look behind me I look behind me there's a wall of water a tsunami a high look like a tidal wave of water I looked and it was gaining on us uh, as hard as it could go I look I beat that horse I said let's go buddy come on run man one I'm driving him hard brother Anderson we were stretched out uh, I was in stress precious kept saying uh, can I take it off I said no leave that thing on there and we just kept on and finally I saw the walls of a city it was a high walled city and I looked up on top of that wall and there was hundreds looked like maybe even thousands of people as they were standing on top of that high wall and they was cheering I could hear them cheering us on and I'm telling that horse come on I'm looking and that tidal wave is closer and closer to us and the scripture came to me said we're compassed about with a great cloud of witnesses I said come on buddy and I was beating on him and I looked and there's a drawbridge right at the edge uh, uh, outside of that gate and it was down and somehow I knew they're about to close the drawbridge I saw the cables as they tightened up I said they're going to close it hurry hurry and I beat that horse I said hurry he was running as hard as he could run and as I looked I, I saw that bridge as it popped up just a little bit out of its slot I said they're going to close it I said you got to hurry you got to hurry I'm beating him and as a, just a moment time that animal stepped up on top of that drawbridge and I'm looking and there's the gates some distance ahead of us and I'm watching them gates as they begin to close the drawbridge are going up and the gates are closing I'm a beating on that horse and I could hear that crack crowd just, just cheering us on and, and as we got to the gate the horse seemed like he just made it in that gate the, the doors on that city 
those gates. Uh, they closed up against the wheels. Uh, and we just went on in and they slid around the back. Uh, and as we just made it uh, in on the inside, uh, the scripture came to me and said, If the righteous scarcely be saved, where shall that sinner and that ungodly appear? I said to my wife, We have made it in, but we have barely made it in and this week I've been praying this thing's been on my mind and I asked the Lord I said God what is that wall of water that was on my trail back there and it seemed to me like I said it seemed to me like that the Lord showed to me that that wall of water is false doctrine and false teaching and lies of the devil that old serpent you see the word water and word it means the same thing water and word means the same thing after brother 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 after we had made that long journey over that bridge and struggled through all of that the devil that old serpent was making his last and final attempt to destroy us with lies and with false deception that's where we're at tonight I believe brother we're in the home stretch and the city it's in sight and the devil knows that we're in the home stretch and brother that wall of water is nothing but lies and deception of the devil somebody praise the Lord about right here hallelujah the devil that old serpent was making his last and final attempt to destroy us with his lies with his deception Amen. Let, let me tell you a story that you've read in the Bible many times this way. There was a rich young ruler who was standing at the gate of heaven, which is Christ Jesus. He was asking him a question. He said, may I come in into eternal life? The giver of life said, yes, you can. But he said, there is one more hurdle you have got to cross. There's one more test of life. And the young man and said tell me what it is that I may do it and the giver of life eternal he said don't just be a hearer of the word don't just be a hearer of the word of truth but be a doer be a doer of the truth amen the young man standing at the gate of life said to the giver of life tell me the word of truth that I may do them and the giver of life said before you can come into eternal life you must be willing to sell all and give all you must be willing to sell all and give all to come into life and just about the time that the giver of life spoke this to him brother I want you to know a tidal wave a flood of lies of water came out of the serpent's mouth into the heart of the young man the serpent said to him you don't have to do that to go into eternal life you don't don't have to live like that you don't have to take all that you don't have to walk the straight and the narrow way you don't have to do that to enter into that city of life the young man believed the devil's lie and he walked off and he walked away from the giver of life he walked away from the gates to the city of life he believed the devil's lie and he was damned forever Hear me tonight, church. The devil wants to deceive us. He wants to deceive us. Church, the devil's last attempt to destroy us just before we make it into the city of life will be to get us to believe his lies. Hear what I'm saying? And if we do, all will be lost. And all that we've done will be in vain. Church, we must press until we are in the city of God. I said we must press. We must endure, endure until the end of this race. If the righteous scarcely be saved. If the righteous with great difficulties scarcely be saved. Where shall the stubborn and the rebellious go? I'll tell you where they'll go, mister. They'll go into hell's fire to be tormented forever and forever. We 
must hear the word of God. We must be doers of the word of God. Don't you let the devil deceive you tonight. I'm telling you folks, we are in the home stretch. That city tonight is inside. Can somebody say amen? Jesus said in Matthew 24, he said, take heed that no man deceive you. That means devil or anything. Jesus said, for many false prophets shall rise and shall deceive many. Church, Jesus said, but he that shall endure, endure until the end, the same shall be saved. Church, there's been many who has made it over that wide wide gulp they have come a long a long way they have pressed along this road they have pushed they have sacrificed to make it but in the last few miles of that city brother with the city in sight they begin to slow down they begin to slumber and to sleep they stop pressing to pray they stop pressing to fast they stop pressing to read God God's word. They stop pressing to seek the desires. They stop pressing to seek the purpose and the plan of God for their lives. Church, that wall of water of lies of the devil is beginning to fall on some of them even now. Even now, there's some of you sitting in here tonight who have allowed your faithfulness to slip away from you. You are no longer faithful like you were in the beginning. You have lost your dependability. Your trustworthiness is gone. You are no longer reliable. Listen, let me tell you this. The city now is in sight. And the drawbridge is about to be lifted. The gates are closing. Jesus said in the book of Revelations, He said, Be thou faithful unto death, and I will give thee a crown of life. In other words, be faithful always. Be faithful all the way unto the end. Jesus said in another verse of scripture, To him that overcome will I grant to sit with me in my throne, even as I am overcome and sit down with my Father in his throne. Let me tell you, hell is a reality. I said hell is a reality. It is an insane asylum of eternity. It is a place of the doomed and the damned. I'm telling you it's a place where the fire will never go out the pain will never quench I'm telling you there'll be no rest there day or night I don't want to go there the devil is slowly convincing some of you that God don't hear your prayers anymore with the city just in sight I said the devil is slowly convincing some of you that God don't hear your prayers anymore with the city just in sight. He is convincing some of you that all of the word of God is not true with the city just in sight. Church, that serpent, by his cunning, crafty words of water, he is convincing some of you that God is not going to save your family. It's only a myth, he's saying. It's only something that you're dreaming about. But listen to me, the devil is a liar. I said he's a liar. He is a liar. God's word is truth. You hear me? I said you hear me tonight. We're on the home stretch. I'm telling you this wall of water is nothing but the lies of the devil trying to overcome you and discourage you along the way. You haven't seen no answers but hold on. It shall come to pass. I said it shall come to pass. I said it shall come to pass. There's not enough of powers in hell to change one word of God's divine book. We're on the home stretch. The city is inside. Hallelujah. The devil is about to convince some of you that have sickness in your body that God is not going to heal your body and the healing is not for you 
And the healing is not for everybody. I, I, I challenge folks with that all the time. People come to me with a bunch of whys. I don't have the answer to the whys. I got an answer to the healer tonight. I mean, he took, he took, he took our infirmities. He bore our sickness. By his stripes, I am healed. I said, I am healed. Hear me tonight, healing. It is the children's bread. The devil is trying to get you to disbelieve God, not have no faith or confidence in God. He said, cast not away, therefore, your confidence, for in it you have a great recompense of reward. I don't know about you, but my God's a healer. My God's a deliverer. My God is a provider. My God is a miracle worker. My God can do anything, church. Raise your hands and love him. The tidal waves of lies is coming your way, trying to bombard you every day with a city inside. Some of you have run well. Some of you have run well. I've watched people over the years that run well. When I first got into church, they run well. I, I mean, they, they, they run well. The race that was set before them, they run well. You know, some of you, you have run well. You have walked the straight and the narrow way, but now the floodwaters of the devil is overtaking you. Some of you in the home stretch. Some of you in the home stretch is beginning to question some things and wonder if they are real or not. You're on dangerous grounds when you begin to question God's word. Is it real? Does he really mean it? Is it for me? Can I really depend on God? That is the devil. That's the devil trying to deceive you. Amen. I'm on this buggy. I got my woman. And I believe that woman also represents my church. And I'm sitting there and I'm saying, come on. Come on. We got to make it. And I'm telling you, by the grace of God, I'm going to make it. I'm going to bring this church into that city by the grace of God. I rebuke every devil that's come against you. I bind every powers of hell that's come against you. This is my field. I said it's my field. This is my flock. And I rebuke and bind every devil and claim the victory for every home and family. Some are allowing the devil to plant these lies in your heart. Church, God speaks to the Galatian church through Paul. He tells them this. He said, I marvel that you are so soon removed from him that called you unto the grace of Christ and to another gospel, which is not another. But there be some that trouble you and would pervert that's a familiar word today, ain't it? You see, perverts walking around all the time, don't we? But some have perverted the gospel of Christ. But though we are an angel from heaven, preach any other gospel unto you than that which we have preached unto you, let him be accursed. As we said before, we say, I now again, if any man preach any other gospel unto you than you have received, let him be accursed. For do I now persuade men or God? Or do I seek to please men? For if I yet please men, I should not be the servant of Christ. I've not come to please men. I am the servant of Christ. What was the truth in the beginning? It still is the truth. I said what was truth in the beginning? It still is the truth. What was the truth of 50 years ago, 100 years ago, 200 years ago, or however far back you want to go, brother? I'm telling you what was truth in the 
beginning, it still is. What was ever sin, it still is sin. Hear me now. The gospel was preached in the beginning. It brought great outpourings of the Holy Ghost. You hear what I'm saying? Some of you in here tonight, brother, you remember 30 years ago or longer, mister, when them old holiness preacher got up and preached at Gun Barrel Street. I'm telling you, they preached it so hot that you could feel the flames of hell. And in the midst of all of that, God came down. It was not a lie. I said it was not a lie. It wasn't a lie then. And God came down. They've changed the gospel. They perverted the gospel. And now it's nothing more than a dead letter. Most churches are no more than a graveyard. Why? Somebody has perverted the gospel. The gospel was preached in the beginning. Brought a great outpouring of the Holy Ghost. The gospel preachers brought deliverance, healings, and miracles. The gospel of sanctification preached brought downpours and downpours of the Holy Ghost with power. Amen. There's been multitudes saved. There's been multitudes filled with the Holy Ghost at the preaching of this old time gospel that is looked down on, criticized and condemned today. And they say we've learned better. We don't have to put up with that. We don't have to live like that no more. They have been overtaken by the devil's lies. If it worked back then, brought deliverance back then, brought salvation back then, brought miracles back then, I'm telling you it's still the same tonight. I tell you it's still the same tonight. Hear what I'm saying. I, they're telling these preachers a lie. They're saying there's nothing wrong. There's nothing wrong with looking like the world. There's nothing wrong with blowing smoke and spitting brown. There's nothing wrong with loving the world and the things that are in the world they're lying against all that was preached in the beginning I said what was preached 50, 100 years ago they're lying against it now I said they're lying against it amen they're spewing out lies like rivers of waters I'm telling you tonight folks it's still the same with the city in sight they're spewing out lies like rivers of water Covering multitudes or causing multitudes to be damned. They said there's nothing wrong with painting up their face like a harlot. Cutting off their hair like a lesbian pervert. They said there's nothing wrong with women wearing pants like a man. With the city in sight. It was preached hard against when I first came into the Pentecostal church. They preached against women wearing men's clothing, men's pants. Cutting their hair like a man. Trying to dress like a man. They preached hard against it. The Holy Ghost would come down. Multitudes were saved. Multitudes were sanctified. Multitudes were filled with the Holy Ghost. There were signs and wonders and miracles. But something has took place along the way. Mister, I'm telling you, the devil with his tidal waves of lies has come in and said there's nothing wrong with that. But look at the condition of the church. And something will tell you something's wrong. They have believed the devil's lie. It's still the gospel of the Lord Jesus Christ. All of them old time preachers preached brother hard and straight at the preaching. This nation was blessed. I'm telling you this nation was blessed and saw the power of God moving. Now many have believed the devil's lie and they say you don't have to preach that anymore. They have brought a curse. They have brought a curse on the church on the most part. I said they brought a curse on the church on the most part. Paul said let them be a curse when they change this gospel. They have changed the gospel. They say there's nothing wrong with it. I refuse to bend. I refuse to bow to, to Neb's idol. Hear what I'm saying tonight. I'm not come to be the friend of a man. I'm trying to get people into that city. It's not very far off. And with everything that I can do, I'll preach you the truth if you'll stick around, mister. I won't water it down to please you or nobody else. But I'm telling you the sword is sharp on both sides. 
sides. It'll get you coming and going. It'll trim your tree. But it'll get you to glory. They brought a curse on the church on the most part. God said again to the Galatians through Paul, Oh foolish Galatians, who has bewitched you that you should not obey the truth before whose eyes Jesus Christ has been evidently set forth crucified among you? Church, what was still is. I said what was still is. Nothing can change It remains the same forever. Listen, the body, the body, this body, your body, the body is still the temple of God. It is not a billboard. It is not a signpost to advertise the lust and the desires of the flesh on. Hear what I'm saying. This body, your body, is not a billboard. It's not a signpost to advertise the lust of the eyes and the lust of the flesh and the pride of life. They're walking in churches. Got pastor's wife, brother. Coming, I'm Pentecostal, I'm talking about. Wearing their britches. Front of their blouse. Is so low, you can almost see what they got on the top. They're not ashamed of it. I said, They're not ashamed of it. Hear me tonight, folks. They've been bewitched by the devil's lies. This body is still the temple of God, it's not a billboard or a signpost to advertise the lust and the desires of the flesh on. The world and the devil and his lies and the way to hell, we don't put a sign on it. This is God's temple. What it was back yonder, it still is today. Amen. God's holy temple. Amen. Church, this body was created by God for God. It was created by God for his glory and for his glory alone. One old devil made the statement said, you know, any old barn needs a good coat of paint. Soon as I heard that, brother, I hit the floor. I said, I'm going to tell you something. My wife is not an old barn. I'm going to let you, my wife is not an old barn. You hear what I'm saying? Brother, she's not something that needs to be painted up, decorated up by wearing gold and silver and all kind of jewelry. She is not a billboard for the world or the devil. She's a saint. I said, she's a saint. She is the redeemed of the Lord. Her body is the temple of the Holy Ghost. Hear what I'm saying tonight. We got young people that never hear this kind of of a preaching. If I were to go in some of these big mega churches uh, where they run into hundreds and thousands uh, and preach this, mister, it empty out. They'd be mad. Why? They've been fed the devil's lie until they're addicted by it. Uh, and they say you don't have to live like that. My friend, the road is still straight. Uh, the way is still narrow. It's still going to take a sanctified life in order to make it in that city. This body is still the temple of the Holy Ghost. This body is still to glorify God from the inside out. With a city in sight and a tidal wave of lies of the devil on our trail, we've got to hurry. We have got to hurry to enter in. We must keep our eyes on the mark for the prize. In the high calling of God. Church, listen to me, will you? In my dream that I told you about, in my dream, we barely made it in. We was doing everything that we know to do. We was, every step as I preached here Wednesday night was vital. Everything was vital. Everything had to be just right. We didn't have no room to play around with. I just kept saying one foot in front of the other. One foot in front of the other. We got to make it. And in all the struggling, in all the pushing, in all the hurrying, we just barely made it in. 
And I read that scripture again where he said, if the righteous scarcely be saved. I realized what he was talking about. There's no room for error. I said, there's no room for error. Hear what I'm saying there is no room for error, mister. You miss it. You missed it. Jesus told that rich young ruler, thou lackest one thing. And the Bible said he wanted to know what it was. Sell all you got and give it to the poor. He turned away from the gates of heaven and walked through the gates of hell. Why? He refused to give everything to the Lord. A tidal wave of lies of the devils on our trail. We must hurry to enter in. We must keep our eyes on the mark for the prize of the high calling of God. There's no room for flesh. There's no room for the world. There's no room for the devil. Our brother Jude said to us, he's writing some 60 years after Pentecost. 60 years have gone by. And he said it was needful for me to write unto you Exalt you that you should earnestly contend for the faith which was once delivered unto the saints. The lies of the devil are rolling through our churches. And with the city in sight, he has convinced multitudes after multitudes in the city, in the church that they do not need to be filled with the Holy Ghost and power. I remember back, God gave me a message back in the 90s. When the early 90s, and I was preaching on the necessity of being filled with the Holy Ghost. Spirit of the Lord said, the time is coming. When preaching on the Holy Ghost will be a scarce message. And the reason it is, brother, is because it's being rejected. You don't find seekers in the altar much anymore seeking to be filled with the baptism of the Holy Ghost. And the reason is, brother, the reason is the devil has convinced them that they can make it without the Holy Ghost. He has convinced multitudes to believe his lie. Hear me tonight. It is not a lie. This is not an option I'm talking about. It is a commandment of Almighty God that everyone one of us be full of the Holy Ghost and power. He has convinced multitudes to believe his lie and to reject the spirit of truth. With the city in sight, the devil's lies has convinced the church they do not need to evangelize their family. How do you know that? How do you know that? I know. The majority of the people in the church never evangelizes their family. They never go to see them and encourage them. They never go to talk to them out of their soul and plead with them, the Lord's a coming. God loves you. You need to be saved. You need to get in church. The devil, this tidal wave of lies with the city inside, has convinced them that they don't need to evangelize their families. I preach evangelism. I've been preaching it a long, long time. But it seems like the seed rots under the ground. Seems like it takes no effect nowhere. The devil's convinced them that they don't need to evangelize their neighbors. Most people don't even know their neighbors. They may wave up them or stick up a hand or may not. But they don't even know the ones that are living around them. The devil has convinced them, you don't need to evangelize your neighbors. But they've been convinced it's not a necessity With the city in sight. He has convinced the church on the most part. Let everybody else do it. Let somebody else evangelize the poor and the needy. 
with the city in sight. The tidal wave of the devil's lies has hit the church and has convinced multitudes. Somebody else will do it. Just live for self. Take care of old number one. Brother Randy has got up so kindly and told about the street services. I've seen Brother Randy leave out of here on Saturday, going to the street services. I'd be studying. I'd watch him gather up his stuff, put it in his car, and drive off all by himself and go to the street service. I've watched him over the years. The time come for street services. Sister Hawkins. Sister McClendon, who could hardly walk, had to take a chair. Just the two of them. And sometimes there'd be some others that would go. But I looked at them. They'd sit down in a chair on a street corner and hold up a sign. Hand out a track. Tell somebody, Jesus loves them. When able-bodied people in the church was able to go just for an hour on a Saturday, it would interrupt a yard sale. It would interrupt a, a mall meeting or shopping tour or interrupt something that was personal for yourself. But the devil said, just let somebody else do. Look, the city is in sight. Church, we've got to wake up. The way is straight. The way is narrow. The city is in sight. God's Word tells us in the book of Ephesians that He might present it to Himself a glorious church or that He might present the church to Himself in glorious splendor, without spot or wrinkle or any such thing, but that it might be holy, that it might be faultless. Remember, church, you are not your own. To live and to do as you please. You have been purchased. You've been bought and paid for by the blood by the life of God's own Son, you are not your own. But we must, we must. It's an absolute imperative to be a doer of every word of God. God said in the book of James, Therefore to him that knoweth to do good, and to do it not, to him it is sin. You know, when we sin, you know what we do? We don't do like the Old Testament say, I'm sorry, and just keep on going and come back and say, I'm sorry again. He said to repent. When you do something that you know is not right, you don't get in the altar or go at home wherever and say, Lord, I failed you in this place. God, please forgive me. God forgives you, but you know what you do? You don't keep on doing that. You don't keep going back and doing the same thing over and over. God, I didn't go to street service last time. I ain't been to the prison. I don't go to nursing home. I don't visit my family. I don't visit my neighbors. Lord, I, I don't do all that. Please forgive me. God say, okay, I forgive you. But you know what you do? You get up. You've repented. You turn around. And you start doing what is right. You start doing the things that are right. With the city in sight, church, you got to drive hard. You got to push. You got to press. You got to endure. Do not allow the devil's lies to overtake you and keep you out of that city. God's word said, and for this cause, God shall send them strong delusions that they should believe a lie and that all might be damned who believe not the truth, but have pleasure in unrighteousness. Let me tell you something, that city's in sight. I, I don't believe I had a bean dream. I, I don't believe that somehow or another I just wasn't feeling good and had this 
this dream. I, I, I just, I ain't telling you God gave it. I don't know. I'll tell you, it was strange. It troubled me. I sat precious down and telling her I broke down. I said, you know, I'm telling you, I saw that crowd of people on that wall. They're cheering us on. I'm doing everything I can to get us in there. I know it's about over. It's about closed. 